So standing right here in front of the home in which celebrated poet Robert Frost lived in while he served as professor at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, we are bringing the past forward by inviting celebrated poets of today to share their wisdom and their words with us to offer that inspiration. At age 63, Frost summarized his view of the, quote, mysterious elements, end quote, of creating a poem in an essay titled, The Figure a Poem Makes. First, sound and wildness. Quote, just as the first mystery is how a poem can have a tune in such a straightness as meter, so the second mystery is how a poem can have wildness and at the same time a subject that shall be fulfilled. Second, structure and emotion. No tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. No surprise for the writer, no surprise for the reader. Third, the spark of creation. The artist must value herself as she snatches a thing from some previous order in time and space into a new order with not so much as a ligature clinging to it of the old place where it was organic. Like a piece of ice on a hot stove, the poem must ride on its own melting. We lived in a 100-year-old stone house and um, actually Gregory Pardel came to visit us and the wind was frightening, just moving through the mountains and the sound of it, we'd like hold each other, it was terrible. And this is called White Mountain. There's a wind here so strong it shakes the stone house, a howl from pain and cold, a particular anguish, not a foot in a trap, but a foot in a trap and the snow getting deeper. I look out under the leafless beach, which I'd take for dead if I didn't believe in spring's coming. I walk around the property thinking I might happen upon the source of that sound. How could that cry be wind alone? Something has snapped in two. Something has been lost that won't return in this life. I want to find the source. I'm stumbling in a thin coat that flaps at my sides. It seems as if I might ride the beast that haunts me if I could just let go. Let it take me up as easily as this gale is lifting me now. My pop let me steer when I was small enough to snug between his belly and the wheel. Any random intersection, he might hoist me across the handbrake onto his lap to pilot the ride until he put me back in my place. When I got older, he let me steer while he lit a smoke or shed his jacket. Sun set over the turnpike like a burst capillary. His ashes arrived in a cardboard carton with shipping labels and a barcode, heavy enough to trigger the seatbelt alarm as we clipped home, honeysuckle in the air, from the post office. Any normal person would have put the box on the floor, but I, you know already, don't you? I held him in my lap. You're mine, I told the box of dad dust lifting my hands occasionally to the wind, tempting the evening, swinging our chariot of steel and bone. <laughs>